This video is brought to you by my course Swift Data Bootcamp, a comprehensive guide to building data-driven applications. If you ever wanted to learn Swift Data, then this is the best course for you. Let's check out the different pricing that is available. You can see you can just get the course for three months for only $49. Then you can also get the course for six months for $89. And if you want a lifetime access and all the updates, that's going to be $129. And now check out the content of the course. Now, this is going to course that's going to start with Surf UI state management. It's going to go into getting started with Surf data. You're going to learn about one to many relationship, many to many relationship, understanding queries, versioning, migration, persisting like genre and filtering using enums, persisting and displaying transformable properties, testing iCloud syncing, integrating Swift data with UI cloud applications, storing binary data with Swift data, migrating core data to Swift data. Wow, it has everything as you can imagine. And this is definitely the one of the only courses out there. Check out the great reviews and I'm sure you're gonna love it. So don't let this opportunity slip away. Make sure you get the course. Thank you so much. In the last lecture, you learn about how we can update the title by allowing the user to go to a separate screen and then performing the update. And that's perfectly fine, but our app is so simple that we can simply add or update the title just by typing it over here. Kind of like the Reminders app, which is already installed on your phone or on the Mac. In the Reminders application, you simply click over here in the title and you just start typing. So how can we make that kind of a behavior? It's called in-place editing. So how can we do in-place editing? Now, if you're planning to do in-place editing, what I'm going to do first is to remove a couple of different things that we added. So we don't really want this part. All right, so let's remove that. We're also going to remove the sheet since we're performing the in-place editing. I'm also going to remove the selected to do item. We don't need that anymore. And as you can guess, we don't really need edit to do item screen because we will be performing in place editing. Meaning we will not even leave this particular content view. So now the question is, well, how can we perform in place editing? The first thing is that we're using a text view which creates these fields over here, the titles. The text view is not something that you can edit. If you want to edit the title, then you will have to use a, oh sorry, text. So we have to use the text field. I keep saying text field is not editable. Text field is editable. Text is not editable. So initially we had the text. We're gonna replace it with a text field so that people can type in. The first part is kind of like a placeholder. I can simply say under title. It doesn't really matter because you will have the title anyways. But what should we pass over here as a bindable string? Now, you are inside a for loop and you have access to to-do item. What if we try to pass in the to-do item? Well, if you're passing a to-do item, that has to be bindable. So we can put a dollar sign. But it still doesn't really work. So one of the ways that we can actually do that is by passing in, or we can use a title, but still it doesn't work. So in this case, we will have to use something called a bindable. And we can create an instance and simply assign the actual to-do item that's in the filter to-do items array. We simply assign it to a new instance of bindable. Now, once it is bindable, it means that it can be binded onto the different controls. And that is exactly what you see over here. One of the great things about using bindable in this scenario is as soon as you update your fields, like you can see now that I can actually update, I can click. You can see right there that I can go ahead and click on any of these things. So I can change that to something else, let's say cat. And as soon as I press enter, this particular item or feed the cat will be updated and it will say feed the cat in the actual database. Now, if you want to see it running in action, I'm gonna go ahead and run it in the simulator. 
And the reason I'm running it in a simulator is that in the Xcode previews, we are you know, creating data in memory. So even though I'm gonna change this from feed the rabbit to feed the cat, the next time the preview is gonna run, it's always going to show you feed the rabbit because it's in memory and my changes are only persisted uh, since, you know, Xcode preview, if it's gonna run, it's gonna remove all those changes. It's persisted in memory. But now I'm gonna to try to run this in an actual simulator where we are persistent to the database, SQLite database. You can see that I have two items, mow the lawn and feed the car, which doesn't really make any sense. So I can now click over here and I can say feed the cat and press enter. And now you'll be able to see that this feed the cat will be persisted to the database. Uh, just to confirm, we can go ahead and stop it and run it again. And now you can see feed the cat. So it is actually persisted to the database. Another thing to keep in mind is, now another thing to keep in mind is what about the completed items, items that you have completed? I can go over here and change the completed items also, but I think in the real app, you shouldn't be allowed to change the completed items. I mean, or else I can simply say feed the rabbit and feed the cat and feed the dog. And I haven't done those things. So we will limit changing or editing or inline editing to the pending items. But when you go to the completed item, we don't really want the user to be able to change this. So how can we do that? Well, we have a text field over here. In the text field, we can also use disabled, where we can pass in the Boolean value, indicating that the text field is disabled and you cannot really type in the text field. Based on the completed status of the item, we can always say if the to-do item is completed, then disable is true, else disable is false. And just by typing that code, we'll be able to change the items when they are in pending state. Let's say if I go over here and change it to rabbit, and that's perfectly fine. But if I go over here into completed, I won't be able to change it. I, there's this text box is disabled. So just with few lines of code, we were able to create inline editing. And the good thing is that when we're using inline editing, all the data is actually saved to the database. So I hope you have enjoyed this nice video. Make sure to give it a thumbs up, share it, and also check out my courses.